My mother's the same. <laughs> Thinking they're with you and they're not. before the service starts because it's a slightly different beginning to the service today or uh, not so different if you remember how Easter had been done in the past. Uh, so there'll be a gospel procession today for the first time I think since before the pandemic which means uh, we'll be processing down to read the gospel and those of you at the front uh, you might need to just kind of shuffle around to face backwards uh, to see the gospel in order to accommodate uh, our online viewers, uh, there's no point in having the gospel read where they can't see us. We're going a bit further than you used to. Um, uh, that apparently is the optimum place for the camera. And we begin with a procession coming in with a paschal candle. So um, in a moment, I'm going to disappear that way with the uh, altar party and go around the church to the porch while the choir processes into their places. Uh, then we'll stand uh, for the beginning of the service. And you will see, um, starting on page three, as we process in with the Paschal candle, three times we proclaim the light of Christ. The first time whispered, the second time said, the third time shouted. So you need to make a differentiation in your, your volume levels of those three. Uh, now, I tried doing this at the... Um, the dawn service, and when I whispered the light of Christ, I'm not sure everyone heard me, so you have to listen very carefully for my whispering. I'll do a, a stage whisper at that point. I think that's all we need to say before the service starts. So uh, we'll have a moment of quiet now. John will lead us with a couple of uh, beautiful chorale preludes um, with a, a theme of the resurrection, but some words to introduce that quiet, prayerful moment these words are from Gregory of Nazianzus from the 4th century. 
Yesterday, I was crucified with Christ. Today, I am glorified with him. Yesterday, I was dead with Christ. Today, I share in his resurrection. Yesterday, I was buried with him. Today, I am waking with him from the death of sleep. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, this is the day when our Lord Christ passed from death to life. We join with Christians throughout the world to celebrate the awesome power of God. As we hear his word and proclaim all that God has done, we can be confident that we shall share his victory over death and live with him forever. Christ, yesterday and today, the beginning and the end, Alpha and Omega, all time belongs to him and all ages. To him be glory and power through every age and forever. Amen. May the light of Christ, rising in glory, banish all darkness from our hearts and minds. In the faith of the Church, that Jesus died in accordance with the Scriptures, was buried, and on the third day rose again, Christ victorious over death, we bear this Easter candle. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. The light of Christ has inspired all the apostles and saints, witnesses and martyrs, whose living and dying have proclaimed the risen Lord through the ages. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God.
The light of Christ has been given to us in the resurrection faith that we have received, to which we hold and by which we live, witnessing to the risen Christ among us to the end of time. The light of Christ. Thanks be to God. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. We sing our opening hymn, number 206. Jesus Christ is risen today. Let us pray that we may reign with the risen Christ in glory, the collect and the readings for Easter day. God of glory, by the raising of your Son, you have broken the chains of death and hell. Fill your church with faith and hope, for a new day has dawned, and a way to life stands open in our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. true it is that God has no favourites, but that in every nation those who are God-fearing and do what is right are acceptable to him. He sent his word to the Israelites and gave the good news of peace through Jesus Christ, who is Lord of all. 
I need not tell you what has happened lately all over the land of the Jews, starting from Galilee after the baptism proclaimed by John. You know how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. Because God was with him, he went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil. And we can bear witness to all that he did in the Jewish countryside and in Jerusalem. They put him to death, hanging him on a gibbet, but God raised him to life on the third day and allowed him to be clearly seen, not by the whole people, but by witnesses whom God had chosen in advance, by us, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He is the one designated by God as judge of the living and the dead. It is to him that all the prophets testify, declaring that everyone who trusts in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. We sing our gradual hymn, number 212, 212, Now the Green Blade Rises. Jesus Christ according to St. John. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary of Magdala came to the tomb. She saw the disciple, the one whom Jesus loved. They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, she said and we do not know where they have laid him. So Peter and the other disciple set out and made their way to the tomb. They ran together, but the other disciple ran faster than Peter and reached the tomb first. He peered in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not enter. Then Simon Peter caught up with him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the napkin which had been round his head, not with the wrapping. And he saw and believed. Until then, they had not understood the scriptures, which showed that he must rise from the dead. So the disciples went home again. 
But Mary stood outside the tomb, weeping. And as she wept, she peered into the tomb and saw two angels in white sitting there, one at the head and one at the feet, where the body of Jesus had lain. They asked her, Why are you weeping? She answered, They have taken my Lord away, and I do not know where they have laid him. With these words, she turned round and saw Jesus standing there, but she did not recognise him. Jesus asked her, Why are you weeping? Who are you looking for? Thinking it was the gardener, she said, If it is you, sir, who removed him, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said, Mary. She turned and said to him, Rabuni, which is Hebrew for teacher. Do not cling to me, said Jesus, for I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and tell them that I am ascending to my Father and your Father, to my God and your God. Mary of Magdala went to tell the disciples, I have seen the Lord, she said, and gave them his message. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Once upon a time, when I was a school governor, each of the governors of that school was linked to a particular class and a teacher in that primary school. So every now and again, I would sit in on some of the lessons in that class. On one occasion, I found myself sitting on a, in on a science lesson. The children had to experiment by dropping various objects into water to see what happened to them. They dropped in nails and they sank to the bottom of the water. They dropped in some wood and it floated. But what they enjoyed most of all were the ping pong balls, which if you held them down at the bottom of the water, they didn't just float, they came up so fast, they popped out of the water and um, the children had great fun with those. Why do the ping pong balls rise? Well, because they're full of air and air is lighter than water. Air will always rise up through water. Water cannot hold it down. That's one of the laws of nature. I found myself thinking at the time and afterwards of the words of the Bible. Many waters cannot quench love. Neither can the floods drown it. For love is strong as death. That, I believe, is also one of the laws of the universe. That love is stronger than death. Love endures all things. Love never ends. Love will always overcome death. Love may be weighed down, crushed, submerged, buried, but it will always rise up. Jesus Christ 
was the perfect example of a life full of love. He was put to death and was buried, but the tomb could not hold him. On the third day, he burst forth through the surface of death into the new life of the resurrection. What Easter shows us is that there is a force at work in our universe, in our lives, which is stronger than darkness and death. The powers of evil did their worst to Jesus, and for a moment it looked like they had won. But Jesus is the true light that no darkness can extinguish, the true life that no death can ever overcome. It's significant, I think, that in every resurrection story, the disciples failed to recognise Jesus. In the story we've just heard, Mary saw a man she thought was the gardener. She didn't recognise Jesus. Why? There may be many reasons, but I think a key one is that when you pass through the waters of death, you were always changed. Jesus didn't come back to life. He went through death and came out the other side. And more than that, because when God makes all things new, he doesn't just tinker, he goes the whole hog. This is new life, life in all its fullness, life eternal. The wonderful thing is, this isn't just something that happened once, a long time ago. It's happening all the time. The laws of the universe go back to the dawn of time and will remain in force until the end of time. So at Easter, we don't say, Jesus Christ was risen 2,000 years ago. We say, Jesus Christ is risen today. We all have times in our lives like Good Friday, when everything seems to be going wrong, when things are falling apart, times of tragedy, grief, loss, depression, darkness. When we're in the middle of one of these times, we often can't see a way out. The darkness seems endless. That's how it feels to me. Every time I watch the news and see what's going on in Gaza, in Ukraine, in Sudan. The terrible evil of war. The brutality of the way civilians are being treated. The destruction of homes and whole cities. The lies that people are being told. To hold on to a belief in the supremacy of love in the face of evidence like this is difficult. It's an act of faith which goes against the grain of what we see with our eyes. But we believe that the God who turned the terrible events of Good Friday into the joyful new life of Easter can also raise us up out of our dark times and give us new light and life. If I were to summarise the Gospel in one sentence, in my own words, I would say, there's nothing so bad that God cannot bring good out of it. That's what Good Friday and Easter Day mean to me. Love is stronger than death. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness has not overcome it. In the words of our favourite hymn, sin and hell and death shall never o'er us final triumph gain. God is love, so love forever o'er the universe must reign. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
We turn back to our sheets to page 7. In the early church, the first baptisms always took place at Easter. Lent was a time of preparation, and those who were preparing for baptism uh, weren't allowed to stay for the second part of the service when uh, at the altar, the Eucharist. They would have been baptised in the service which went through the night over Easter Eve into Easter Day. So they were baptised into the death and burial of Jesus so they could be raised up with Christ to new life. They were buried symbolically in the waters of baptism so they could rise to the new life of Christ. So at Easter, it's appropriate that we renew our baptismal vows. Can I invite you to stand if you're able to for these? Brothers and sisters in Christ, as we celebrate the resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ from the dead, we remember that through baptism, God has called us out of darkness into his marvellous light. Now that we have completed our observance of Lent, we renew the promises made at our baptism, affirming our allegiance to Christ and our rejection of all that is evil. Therefore I ask, do you reject the devil and all rebellion against God? Do you renounce the deceit and corruption of evil? Do you repent of the sins that separate us from God and neighbour? Do you turn to Christ as Saviour? Do you submit to Christ as Lord? Do you come to Christ, the way, the truth and the life? May God, who has given you the desire to follow Christ, give you strength to continue in the way. Amen. Brothers and sisters, I ask you now to profess the faith of the Church. Do you believe and trust in God the Father? I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. Do you believe and trust in his Son, Jesus Christ? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead. Do you believe and trust in the Holy Spirit? I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. May Christ dwell in your hearts through faith, that you may be rooted and grounded in love and bring forth the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We sit on you for our prayers. In the power of the Spirit, and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. Almighty and everlasting God, by whose Spirit the whole body of the Church is governed and sanctified, hear our prayer which we offer for all your faithful people, that in their vocation and ministry they may serve you in holiness and truth to the glory of your name. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Most gracious God and Father, in whose will is our peace, 
turn our hearts and the hearts of all to yourself that by the power of your spirit the peace which is founded on justice may be established throughout the world at this time when so many nations are racked with war and violence. Lord, in your mercy. O oh Lord, we pray that our risen Saviour may fill us with the joy of his glorious and life-giving resurrection. We pray for the Church in the province of the West Indies, its Archbishop Howard Gregory, and all his priests and congregations. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we ask that you will reveal the light of your presence to the sick, the weak, and the dying, and all who care for them. Particularly remembering the King, the Princess of Wales, Elizabeth Whitton, Peter Jenner, Brenda Kiniston, and Frank Byron. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Jesus, the resurrection and the life, we give you thanks for all who have lived and believed in you. We pray for the souls of Jess Swindell, Edith Mycock, and Peter Edwards, who died recently. And at their years mind, for Douglas Burgess, Claire Patterson, Neil Wallace, Marjorie Glyn Jones, Terry Ruffle, Molly Hodgson, and Zelda Barber. Raise us with them to eternal life. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. We stand to share the peace. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then they were glad when they saw the Lord. The peace of the Lord be always with you. We offer one another a sign of peace. So we now sing our offertory hymn, number 207, 207. Jesus lives, thy terrors now can, O death, no more appall us. <laughs>
be present. Be present, Lord Jesus Christ, our risen High Priest. Make yourself known in the, in the breaking of bread. Amen. It is indeed right. It is our duty and our joy, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, <coughs> Almighty and Eternal Father. And in these days of Easter, to celebrate with joyful hearts the memory of your wonderful works. For by the mystery of his passion, Jesus Christ, your dear Son, has conquered the powers of death and hell and restored in men and women the image of your glory. He has placed them once more in paradise and opened to them the gate of life eternal. And so, in the joy of this Passover, earth and heaven resound with gladness, while angels and archangels and the powers of all creation sing forever the hymn of your glory. that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you 
this our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we, in the company of all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. <coughs> Every time we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, let us keep the feast. Alleluia. Draw near with faith. Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Christ died and was raised for you. And feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Everyone who is used to receiving communion in any church is very welcome to receive here. If you'd rather come forward for a blessing instead, um, just please keep your hands down or hold a book in your hand as a sign to me. And if you feel more comfortable simply staying in your <coughs> pews, that's fine too. Everyone is welcome in whatever way you choose to participate.
Eternal God, our beginning and our end, preserve in your people the new life of baptism. As Christ receives us on earth, so may he guide us through the trials of this world and enfold us in the joy of heaven, where you live and reign, one God, for ever and ever. Amen. We say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace, and opened the gate of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We who spread lights give life to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. So first of all, I have to say a huge thank you to all those who helped decorate the church so beautifully. Um, uh, it, looked, it looked stunning coming in this morning uh, at dawn time and smelt beautiful. Um, just, uh, it, I shouldn't single people out, but um, uh, Jill Baker said to me yesterday, said, there are flower rangers and there's Kathy. <laughs> who did the cross <laughs> but they're all beautiful and, and there's just a lot of symphony of colour and praise in the flowers thank you to the musicians not just for today but for all the work through Holy Week and Passion Tide lots of extra services uh, all beautifully sung and it really makes a difference giving communion while we're having that amazing anthem coming from the back of church. It's, it's such a, a combination of senses. It's uplifting. Uh, I wanted to say thank you to Peter, um, to Judith, to Helen, to everyone who helped with the dawn service. Um, uh, we were blessed with amazing weather and the sunrise, which came just as we finished. Uh, thank you to our altar party today. Um, first time we've done this, as I say, for some years. So uh, that was a particular joy. Lovely to have back with us a number of people who've been away having had operations and convalescence time. So uh, Gwen, lovely to have you with us, and Alison. Um, and Margaret, great to have you back with us too. And Richard, indeed. He's gone. Richard was here earlier. Uh, today, there is no 6.30 six, no six service. Um, we reckon starting at 6.30 in the morning, uh, we'll have one or the other, not both. Wednesday this week, there will be a 10 o'clock service in the parish centre. Uh, I won't be here, but Barbara Webb has very kindly <laughs> said she will take that service. Next Sunday, the services are, as usual, at 8.30, 10 o'clock, and then at 6.30, there will be a quiet, uh, intimate communion service in the parish centre. Are there any other notices? Yes, Laura wants to give one.
Good morning, everybody. Um, I just want to say a really big thank you to everybody who came to my wet felting workshop last week. I had a really good time um, and everything went really well. Thank you to everybody who came and supported me and enjoyed it and everybody who helped me organise it as well. Um, if anybody wanted to see the exhibition, it's going to be in Manchester Metropolitan University, running from the 14th of June to the 24th of June, if you want to come and see your work up on the walls. <laughs> thank you. So we sing our final hymn, number 218, 218, Thine be the glory. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well-pleasing in his sight. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, be with you and with those you love and pray for this Easter and always. Amen. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen, risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. With the risen life of Christ within you, go in the peace of the risen Christ. Alleluia. Alleluia. 
Thanks be to God. Alleluia. Alleluia.